say if you are changing your process and you really don't know how that's going to work. So you, you really don't know what, what, and when you implement it, what kind of impact will be. So you go ahead and create your new process and maybe there are 10 things in the new process. So you may pick up two things and say, okay, we will implement these two things in different departments. So the first iteration could be just develop those two. The second iteration will be take those two and implement in this department. The third iteration implement in this department. The fourth iteration will be implemented in four departments. The fifth will be implemented rest. And then come back and pick up another two and repeat the process. And that works really very, very well. Because the process improvement projects, if you try to do Big Bang and implement all 10 changes in all 50, 20 departments, it becomes overwhelming. So if you do in a in a iterative manner, in an agile manner, it really works very, very well. So the first thing what I'm doing is helping them, uh, you know, track how do you really track the cost of quality and see these things. So I have actually given them eight or nine recommendations how they're going to do it. So right now their cost of quality they measure <coughs> at the end of each release and each release is six months approximately, so two in a year. So I told them that this is no, no use of measuring it because you don't see any trends for, in, you need four or five releases to see a trend. And by the time you have four or five releases, you are two and a half years, three years already lost. So if you are making a decision based on something that happens two years ago, the things have changed in two years, so it is useless to do that, unless you do it every month or every week. And that's a big thing. How are you going to collect all this information in a month? So I'm going to tell them, okay, you change three, two things or three things. Implement for two months, then add fourth thing, then add fifth thing, then add sixth thing. And then you prioritize which two things are most important for you to capture and implement that. So, so process improvement project I have been using for over the last 10, 15 years and adaptive life cycle uh, or agile is very, very helpful in implementing the process improvement projects. The other example is uh, using agile for all the startups. Uh, so that's, that's another uh, example where you can use Agile. So there are various ways For you what? can start the, the startup company. Let's say you start starting a new company and uh, what are the things. So there you don't know the whole scope of your business. Right. So you say what is most critical for me to do in next next month, mm -hmm. next week. 36 million. Yeah. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, any question on these? these three different type of life cycle. This is important to understand, yes. Well, it just seems like with this adaptive life cycle, your risk might be higher, but then you said the stakeholders are involved the whole time too, so maybe that helps mitigate those a little yes. bit? Yes, 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 it will be because you are involving them. The risk is high because you don't know your scope upfront. So that's why it is high, but then you are involving the stakeholders and say, okay, this is our, for example, Let's say the other example will let's say you want to create a company website. Okay. So we want to create an O'Reilly website you know, or Siemens website. Um, okay, so what the website should have? Maybe it will have 100 pages. Okay, and then 10 pages in this area, 10 pages in this area, 5 pages in this area, 20 pages in this area. So, like you want to define your products. That could be 20 pages or 30 pages. And for each product, we may have two pages, right? something like that. On first page, we, first product page will put this information, second product will put this information. So now if I want to release, so I may have, you know, 10 products. So can I release my website with just a list of all products and the description of one most, uh, most selling product or most uh, critical product and that could be my first release then i'll add two more products that will be my second release i'll add five more products that will be my third release and then i will have uh, 
online uh, e-commerce on the website. I may sell these products online. I, in the first few iterations, I will not do it. So I can build this website, you know, over a period of time. It may still take me one year to build the whole thing, a lot of hundred pages. But I don't have to have users wait for one year. I can start uh, my first month, maybe just a basic thing will be up, uh, up and online. So you reduce the risk, and also actually it's a it's a good thing that uh, stakeholders are involved, so they know what's going on, and they tell actually what is the priority. So so you are working very closely with them, so that risk is really.